Hello, thanks very much for joining me again. This week's river tutorial is going to be a variation on an F fly. The F fly has long been popular amongst river anglers, and today in the vise, what you see is a Hanak 130 barbless hook, and this one's at size 12. Now, I like to tie this fly in smaller sizes as well, but for demonstration purposes, I've decided to go with a 12. So, I'm going to add a little bit of super glue to the shank of the hook. As the thread I'm going to be using today is the Fish On Ultimate Tying Silk and it's in a steel grey colour. I don't know what they call it because the label's all mushed up but it's like a grey colour if you like. So I'm going to catch in my thread behind the eye and just get a bed of thread down. Now as I get towards the, the end of my shank, I'm just going to remove my waist and then I can catch in the last little tag here that I've got. So I've caught that in and I've now got my thread level with where a barb would be on a barbed hook. So the tailing for this, I'm going to use some uh, Coq de Leon. Uh, this one came from Troutline, I believe. Or it may have been get slaughtered. I can't quite remember, but uh, one or the other. So I'm going to take five or six barbs from the stem. And as you rip them away, they should um, all marry up quite nicely. So I want the tail to be fairly long on this fly. So I'm going to catch that in like so, and then I'm going to just come up to about an eighth of an inch and then remove the waist. Now the reason I leave so much of the feather um, on is just to keep the, the shank even, the, sorry, the body of the fly even up the shank. So now I've done that, I can come all the way back to the base of the tail. Now, the body of this fly, I'm going to use some uh, stripped quill, and I, I'm, I've been lazy. I'm going to use uh, some of the trout lines pre-stripped quill. I mean, usually I used to do it myself quite a lot, but I just find um, it's much easier buying the hand-stripped ones. It saves you a world of time and effort. So I've already taken one out of the packet, and they're lovely and long, these ones. You can see how long it is compared to the hook. And I'm just going to take away the, the very tip. And capture that in like so. Then I can come all the way back up the shank. And what I'm going to do is just build the slightest of tapers. There we go. So I've got my rib ready to come up and you might note that I've stopped my thread about two eighths of an inch from the eye of the hook. So I'm now going to bring my quill up. Now because these are so long, I don't really need to use hackle pliers, which is always a bonus. I trust my feathers much more than I trust uh, the hackle pliers most of the time. It's given me a lovely segmented body. And one more turn. And I'm home and dry. Now, a lot of people um, over the years have asked me about pre-soaking the quills before you start tying and, uh, you know, what's the best way. I just take them straight out of the packet, to be honest. And I've, n I've never really had a problem now. 
if you are having problems, then I would suggest that you change your supplier because you shouldn't have to go through all that palaver of soaking the quills to, to make them work. They should work straight out of the packet. They cost enough money. So before I go on, to protect my very valuable quill, I'm going to add just a little spot of the Troutline Perdigon, Perdigon um, resin. Doesn't need much, just a tiny bit. It's just there to protect it from the fish's teeth. And if you don't do this, another trick you can do is before you wind it up, just add a little bit of super glue to the uh, shank of the hook and, and that will give it a little bit more life as well. But I've just done it this way. I do it both ways, to be honest. So I'm using the, the resin this time, but another time I might use um, super glue. Uh, and the reason for that is with a resin, you get a shiny body like I'm getting here. Um, with a super glue, you've got that sort of matte finish, which sometimes I feel it just looks a little bit more natural. Yeah, yeah, I'm overthinking it, I know. Anyway, next... I'm going to add in my wing. So what I'm going to use is some of the Hanak CDC feather here. I'll take, I'm going to use three plumes. Sorry, I should have got this out and got it ready, but it slipped my mind. So I'll take that one away. I've got three plumes and I'm going to marry them up so that the tips are together. Just rubbing, rubbing my fingers through them to get any bits and bobs that are stuck in the fibres out of the way. And I want my wing to come about halfway past the butt of the fly body. So that looks okay. So I'm going to transfer that over to my thumb and forefinger in my left hand. And then I'm going to trim it up. Now, before I go on, I'm going to add a little bit of wax to this just to help grip the, the CDC because uh, it's going to need a bit of help at the front here. So I've caught that on and over it goes in a pinching loop. Once you feel you've got it in place, you can lash down on it like so. So let's have a look at that. I'm just going to open my vice to have a look and see what you're seeing. Yeah, it's looking not too bad. I'm, I'm fairly pleased with that. So I'll lock that down. Okay, so I've got my wing in place and I'm fairly pleased with how it's looking. So next, I'm going to just open up my thread. I've already got some material in my clip here, which I've preloaded. And that is from fish on and it's the dark tan so I need to open that up with my bobkin needle so I can just come in behind the thread insert the needle oh, I'm on form today usually takes me about 16 goes to get that in but there we go it's working out well so come in with my clip dress it up to the thread Capture it in, and then what I can do is spin that up. Once I've got it up, I can just take out any excess from the brush. I don't want it overly heavy. Now, first things first, I'm going to grab my wing and bring it backwards. Don't want to capture any of them tail fibers in mind. And I'm just going to put a couple of turns in behind here. And what this does is it lifts the wing. Yeah, see how that wing's just jumped up there. And then I can come round at the front to finish off.
Okie dokie. So once I've got that in place, I can add some UV resin to my thread. Remove that really annoying bit there. Oh, just caught it. Slick everything back. Then I can put a half hitch in as I do and you can use a whip finish tool if you like. In fact, I might do a video on how to use a whip finish tool. That'd be a right laugh. Okay, so got that in place. I've cured the head. I'm gonna come in with my dubbing brush here, open up the vise and just ease out some of the fibers there. And that gives it a real buggy, buggy look at the head there. And there you have it. It's just a, it's, it's no more than a variation on the, uh, the F fly. I've just used a slightly different body. And it, it's a really good fly. Works, works great all year round as a generic sort of pattern. So, thanks very much for watching. If you've not subscribed already, please do so now. And I'll see you all next time. If you want to make them up, that's how to do it.